Hear, believe, trust, and sealed. What should these four words mean to us? Hey, I'm going to read a lot of scripture today. This video is designed to support my Bible reading challenge. The <laughs> link to that's in the description. The day's reading was the book of Ephesians, chapters one through six. So we're going to be talking, I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture. I'm going to be talking a lot about what Paul said in terms of how, kind of like what the mechanism is of how somebody becomes saved. So Paul was famous for very long sentences. Um, so in the notes, you might see that, you know, I've made a note of how many words were in some of these sentences we're going to be looking into. But let's just jump right into the scripture. So Ephesians 1, 3 through 6 says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into, I'm sorry, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Hey, why am I reading all these? Well, it's to set up what we're going to look at specifically and closely in verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 1. So bear with me. Okay, the next sentence is 125 words. It's Ephesians 7, I'm sorry, Ephesians 1, 7 through 12. In whom we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. It is a lot of words. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. I'm going to read that again, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So all of what I just read is to set up what I think is one of the most important verses in Paul's writings, which is Ephesians 1.13, which says, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So there is that pattern of hear, believe, trust, and sealed. So Ephesians 1.13, this verse is hinging off what Paul wrote in verse 12, where Paul transitions from we to ye. As the apostle to the Gentiles, which is in Romans 11, verse 13, he is explaining what was, up until Christ revealed it to him, a mystery, which is now how or i'm sorry which is how an individual is sealed with that holy spirit of promise so prior to paul nobody knew you know how somebody became sealed or how somebody became saved paul is the one that was given these mysteries from christ and explained it to us in his writings so look at the way that verse 13 is structured this is where sometimes people can get a little confused as to like what the pathway is or what the pattern is so it says in whom also you trusted after Okay, you got to pay attention to those afters, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. So again, after, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the use of after, so think about it just logically for a second, just set all the scripture aside, set all the spirituality aside. There's no way somebody can believe in something that they've never heard of. Okay, you could argue that somebody saw something, okay, but go with me here. Because Paul is only talking about hear, believe, trust, and sealed. And so there's no way to believe in something that you haven't heard. And there's no way to trust in something that you haven't believed. Okay? And then and then we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise after that. So the analogy that I think is the simplest is this. If you've if you've never heard of what a chair is, and then someday some, you know, someday somebody comes up to you and, and they're explaining to you this chair, this concept of a chair. And so they're telling you all about it and they're telling you how it's engineered to hold your weight and how it's designed to have a back so you can rest in it and all that kind of thing. And they're really describing that chair to you and you're hearing this, right? And then you come to the point where it's like, oh, okay, I believe, I believe what this guy's saying. I think that a chair makes sense. 
that it would be cool to have something to sit down in. All right. So you believe it. But you don't really trust that the chair is everything it's supposed to be, you know, and the ability to, you know, it's designed to hold your weight and you can actually relax in it and that kind of thing. You don't really trust that until you actually sit in the chair. Right. So. And then just another quick one. Think about Noah. Okay, Noah was in a completely different dispensation, but yet the path is the same. He heard God. He believed God. But how do we know he trusted God? Well, we know he believed God because he actually built the ark, right? No, no man that believed that that didn't believe something would do all the work of what he heard. Okay, so here's God. He believes God. He builds the ark. And then how do we know that he trusted God? Well, he got in the ark. All right. And then what happened? It says the door was shut. And then it was sealed from the outside. Who sealed the door on the ark? Well, I believe the answer is God. But for today's study, what I'm really trying to put out there is that Noah heard, he believed, he trusted, and then he was sealed. Okay. And in the same way, anybody today, anybody alive today, if they're going to, if they're going to get, if they're going to become a child of God, if they're going to receive the gospel of Christ and, and, and be sealed, they have to hear it first. They have to believe something, right? Jesus is the son of God, or, you know, Jesus died to pay my sins or whatever they're going to start to believe there. You know, again, first Corinthians 15, one through four, at least. And then at some point they trust. Okay. And as individuals, we can look at somebody and we can know, okay, they're hearing it and we can hear them repeat back to us, maybe that they believe it. And we can even hear them say, Hey, I trust it, but we don't know. Okay. That, that trusting thing and that sealed thing that's between the individual and God. And so I don't like when Christians run around going like, Oh, I know that person's saved or I know that person's lost. Okay. Let's not, let's not do that. Christians. First of all, Paul never talked like that. He talked about certain things that he knew about people, but he never said this person's saved or this person's lost. So let's, let's just not do that. Let's, let's preach the truth. Let's help people hear. Let's help them believe. And let's encourage them to trust because then they become sealed. All right. So after being, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, right? That's, that's when that that's that's what it means to get saved that's what it, that's that moment that that circumcision made without hands and you become a child of god your your sins are cut away from your flesh that's where everything happens and it all happens in like you know the twinkling of an eye it's it's that moment that someone truly trusts in their heart that they're sealed with that holy spirit of promise and so what is the holy spirit of promise well ephesians 1 14 we don't have to guess about these things it says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay, so what does that mean? Earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Let's look at another kind of worldly analogy. So if you've ever bought a house, you may have gone through this process where you put down earnest money. And, and that, that earnest money was you saying, I am going to finish this transaction and I'm going to take possession of this property. So it's just a tangible promise that you're going to complete the transaction. So in that same way, God gave us a part of himself, the Holy Spirit, until the redemption of the purchased possession, which is us. God paid for us. Jesus Christ paid for us by shedding his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and we could be reconciled back to a holy God. Okay. Hey, I hope you got some encouragement out of this. And if you're still here listening, I'm appreciative that you hung with me. My name is Eric Johansson. If you are not saved, hey, reach out to me. I'd love to have that conversation with you. And just, you know, it's simple. It's simple to get saved. All right. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification. I do 10 videos a week, five shorts, five long forms, and they generally are connected in content. And so it allows you to listen to things in whatever way you want. So again, thanks for being here. Have a great Bible read. Praise the Lord. <laughs>